Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out the world's oldest border. The United Kingdom is a country. And that country is made up of the countries of England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. All of which are countries. What does it say in Northern Ireland? Doesn't really have a flag. Long story. Is it a long story? Northern Ireland flag. The only flag for Northern Ireland is the Union flag or Union Jack. Oh, okay. There's no official local flag that represents only Northern Ireland. The oh. It is a long story, y'all. So the word country is overused. But we're here mm. to country talk about the country of England and the country of Scotland country. Specifically their border. Which is old. And contested. And surprising. Our, Our favourite. Welcome to Map Men. We're the men. And here's the map. Map Men. Map Men. All right. Map 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 Men. Men. Y'all, I love Map Men videos. Jay Foreman's brilliant. Mark, what's his name, is great. Oh, Mark Cooper Jones. They're great. This is going to be good. I'm going to be stopping the video a lot because they pack in the jokes. And some of them I don't get because I'm an American and they make British -y references. I recently reacted to a video about Hadrian's Wall. Not having seen this yet, I'm going to assume that's what they're going to be talking about. If you'd like to watch my Hadrian's Wall video, I, I don't know how to add it here, but I see other YouTubers do this. It's right here. I'm, I'll have to figure out how to do that later on. Anyway, let's do it. It all started hundreds of years ago when Roman Emperor Hadrian decided this part of Britain was worth it, but this part, probably not so much. <laughs> and so he built a wall, sending a message to any approaching army that if you want to attack us, you're going to have to place at least one hand on this stone and literally hop over. So one of the things that I learned in the Hadrian Wall video that I watched, which was by Simon Whistler, by the way, was that this version of the wall is not accurate. That's not how it was back in the day. It was uh, like 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall in some places. I mean, you could climb over it, but it would be very difficult. And they also had forts all along the wall. People lived on the wall, not on the wall, but next to the wall. And there were places, there were checkpoints and places where you could go through the wall, but those were surrounded by enclosures where guards would live. So it was not as easy as putting your hand on and hopping over back then. One of the reasons that the wall is now, you know, just a few feet high is because a lot of those stones and the materials were used to build roads throughout the years. If I remember correctly, the wall was occupied and lived on. It was a, it was a thing for like 300 years, something like that. Watch the video. It's all there. I also want to point out that, yeah, he has a cement mixer next to him, these guys. South of the border became England, and north of the border became Scotland. Since Hadrian, the border between the two countries has ding-donged back and forth a bit, not least around this poor town, Berwick-upon-Tweed, which has swapped countries 14 times. Although technically in England, for now, Berwick-upon-Tweed <laughs> feels really Scottish. They read Scottish newspapers, their football team plays in the Scottish League, and their accent is a weird mix of Scottish and Geordie. Excuse me, could you say something? Ah, why I'm in Dinagar, what the tool what you hanging about? People got so confused Hang about on. which country. What's it called? Berwick upon Tweed. Which is Berwick upon Tweed. Berwick upon Tweed. What a name for a city. Well, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. <gasps> they have aqueducts. <sighs> Are those Roman aqueducts? It's beautiful. Sometimes known as Berwick on Tweed or simply Berwick. That makes more sense, right? Berwick. There's about 12,000 people living there right now. The name comes from the Old English Berwick, meaning corn farm. Oh. Ah, why I man, deno go aboot the tune like what ye are ye hankin aboot. What is Geordie exactly? I know I've heard the accent, but I just want to hear a sample. I'm gan yem. 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 Means I'm going home. Now I think these guys are based in London, but I see something behind them called the Station Cafe. What if they actually went to Berwick upon Tweed? If they actually went there to film just that bit, I'm gonna have so much <laughs> respect for them. I don't know, respect, or I might be concerned for their mental health at the same time. They're in London. 
liars. Ah, why I'm in Dinegar, what the two lay, what you hung in a boot. People got so confused about which country Berwick was in that official declarations of war in the 19th century had to specify you are at war with England, Scotland, and Berwick upon Tweed. One particular war with Russia forgot to mention Berwick in the peace declaration. Dear Russia, hello. Sorry about the war we had just now. I'm glad it's all over. Phew. Let's never go to war again. Or if we do, can it be a weird, complicated, futuristic war where we don't actually fight because the weapons are so terrifying they don't actually get used? Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. I think he means nuclear weapons. So to clarify, we're no longer at war. As in, you're not at war with England, Scotland, Wales, or any of Ireland. Yay! Right, I think that's everything. You must come and visit sometime, especially Salisbury. Okay, sincerely, the United Kingdom. Which means that Berwick was technically still at war with Russia until 1961. They undeclared war on each other in a ridiculous ceremony where the mayor of Berwick <laughs> declared, The good people of Moscow can now sleep soundly in their beds. Wonderful. I love that uh, this mess of microphones at the bottom of the screen, They're, the microphones are not even pointed in the correct direction. They're just kind of, what a mess. Hilarious. Also, his sesh says, I'm the mayor. The Russians responded by not knowing anything about it. I have to stop this and look at this newspaper. It does look like Russian letters, but they've just turned some English letters backwards. More important stuff is happening right now. Brilliant. Uh, I also like how he has a couple candles burning, a metal pot next to him. The good people of Moscow can now sleep soundly in their beds. <laughs> the Russians responded by not knowing anything about it. The England-Scotland border remains significant today. It's well known that the Scots hate the English, but the English have never understood why those backwards Celts are such a bunch of whinging morons. <laughs> well, that's what you get with a border that has hundreds of years of history. Hundreds, you say? Hundreds, I say. Try 400 million. What? Tell me more. I bloody well will. This is what the world looked like <laughs> half a billion years ago. Well, I'm no evolutionary biologist, but that looks like around the time the first grapulites and cephalopods were formed. Exactly. But at this point, England and Scotland are thousands of miles apart. The land set to spawn Sean Connery is here, and the land set to spawn Mr Bean is here. No Mr. way! Mr Bean was an alien. The production company was English. Well saved. <laughs> and about 400 million years ago, Avalonia and Laurentia collided together. Like this. That dramatic collision formed the Scottish Highlands, once as tall as the Himalayas. This map shows the border where they... A violin and Zidi? That dramatic collision formed the Scottish Highlands, what? once as tall as the Himalayas. Avalonia. Oh, these are parts of our current world that were pieces of it. That's blowing my mind a bit, y'all. It's so far apart. So it looks like, is that part of Nova Scotia? The Republic of Ireland, England, and I guess Northern France and Luxembourg, Belgium and some Denmark and Germany stuff over there. Hmm. So if I look at a map of France, can I see the difference there now? My VPN thinks I'm in Chicago, but I'm not. <laughs> Thank you, NordVPN. Not a sponsor, but happy to be. Anyway, hmm, give me some, uh, give me some satellite. Hmm, I don't really see any obvious natural stuff like a big mountain range or anything. Wild, y'all. My mind is being blown by another Mad Men video. This map shows the border where they collided. And this is the border today. Ooh. So, is it just a massive coinkydink that the line where the mega continents crashed into each other is pretty much exactly where today's England-Scotland border is? Or are the rocks from 400 million years ago still shaping the identities of hmm. these countries? After all, the rocks underneath us affect what plants can grow, what local animals can eat, what building materials are available, and how tasty the tap water is. So perhaps there is something in it, countries. Countries. Okay. The English water is dark and cloudy and the Scottish water is nice. Tap water is. So perhaps... Oh. In England, they have Mars bars, and in Scotland, they have whatever that is. Is that haggis? <laughs> the Queen, and what's his name from The Simpsons? What's his name from The Simpsons? William McMoran McDougall, better known as Groundskeeper Willie. Right. 
Isn't it great when a geographical border actually makes good geographical sense? And who knows, maybe 400 million years from now, England and Scotland will break apart again. And Scotland will be free to pursue a life of full, genuine independence as far away from <laughs> England as possible. <laughs> Freedom! There is some, uh, I sense some, uh, an undercurrent of, uh, something there because I know that Scotland independence from England has been a topic in the past. I did a video about that. Watch it if you'd like. Another great map man, Jay Foreman, Mark, whose name I always forget. Cooper Jones. Cooper Jones. Mark Cooper Jones. Uh, another great video. Thank you, guys. Hey, y'all, be sure to pick up a mug. And thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.